Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network. You are about to listen to the After 40 Podcast with Dr. Deborah Heiser. Whether you're seeking inspiration, guidance, or a fresh perspective on the rich possibilities life offers after 40, this podcast is your go-to source. Hi, and welcome to After 40. If this is your first time here, I'm so excited, and I hope that you'll check out the previous episodes that we've aired. And for those of you joining in today, why meaningful connections matter is what we're talking about today, and I can't tell you how excited I am to talk about this topic. This is one that comes up over and over and over again when I'm talking to people. And it's something that we just take for granted, the connections that we have. Most people that I talk to say, hey, yeah, I've got plenty of connections. But one of the things we do is we bandy about the word friend uh, like it doesn't really mean much. We have friends on Facebook. We have connections on LinkedIn. We have all sorts of social media connections. We have connections in our lives um, all over the place. If we're parents, it's um, sporting events for our children. We have friends of our children's um, of our children. We have friends from the the school of our children. If we're involved in activities, we have friends there. But are they meaningful? Are these connections that we have actually meaningful? And when I say that, I really want to um, talk about the dulling of the perception of meaning that we have been associating with friends and with our connections that we have. Because most of us think of a friend as somebody who's there for us and it is someone who's an entertainment for us, someone we can get together with, have a cup of coffee, hang out. But are we able to really be vulnerable, vulnerable with everybody that we know. And is everybody that we know able to be vulnerable with us? If you think about Facebook, for example, uh, we see a lot of the really exciting things that people do, the trips that they take, the exciting things that they're involved in. And it can seem like a picture perfect life. People on LinkedIn post all the amazing accomplishments that they have. But are we really seeing true vulnerability there that we're connected with? We might not have even ever met these people in person. And in some cases we have, but we haven't seen them in decades. So what we call friends um, and, and connections aren't always meaningful. So here's why they matter. We know that if we have meaningful connections... And that is a person we can be vulnerable with, someone that we feel like if there's trouble, uh, we can call upon them and for good things that we can call upon them as well. And that they can call upon us. It's a two-way street, this meaningful connection. Well, if we have those in our life, we know that we can have better physical uh, longevity throughout our lifespan, better well-being. Um, emotionally during our whole entire lifespan. And it can help to stave off loneliness. We know that people can feel really lonely, even in a crowd, at a party. This is something that people feel sometimes. Um, And it's because they're not having that meaningful connection with others. They're surrounded by people, but they're not feeling like they're really close to them. They're really um, connected in a deeper, meaningful way. So when we think about meaningful connections, we're really thinking about uh, sloughing off the idea of having a lot of connections, quantity of friends, and thinking more about the quality of friends that we have. So we are built to have meaningful connections But it doesn't start that way necessarily. When we're young, we are expected to find out who we are. It's called the identity stage. And when we're in our 20s, in our teens and 20s, and even early 30s, we're really still finding out who we are. 
And when we're doing that, we really need to surround ourselves with a lot of different people so that we can see who our people are. This is the time to have connections that are superficial, that aren't really deep, that maybe they're fun, but we're using our, our time to network or we're using our time to engage in new activities that we haven't tried before while we're finding out who we are. Then we get a little more intimate. We might be finding partners, might be settling down with kids. We start to work and we're engaged in our career in a deep and meaningful way. And this is a time when we don't have the bandwidth for all of those friends that we've made. And we start to slough them off a little bit. And we say, I'm going to keep the ones that really matter to me. Those tend to be the ones that, you know, we say, oh, who am I going to call when something amazing happens? Oh, I got a raise. I got a new job. Who am I going to call? And who am, I, who am I going to call when something bad happens and I need to cry on a shoulder or I, you know, need to say, oh my gosh, I got laid off. I need to tell someone who is it that we tell? Those are our meaningful connections. Likewise, who is it that calls us and says, hey, something great happened to me today? Or, oh, I really need to cry on your shoulder about something that happened today. That's a meaningful connection. We don't do that with everybody. Um, but that's why as we're thinking about our friendships, it's really important to start to think about, especially in midlife, who am I associating with? Are these people bringing meaning in my life? Are they adding to my life? Are they making me feel supported, connected, and like I matter? Um, because these are the friends that are going to make us feel like we're not alone in the world, like we have a lifeline, a support network. And this is something that um, happens in generative with regard to generativity. And I spoke a little bit about that in my previous episode. But when we hit midlife, we hit a point where we want to care for others without expecting an, anything in return, really. We're looking to bring more meaning into our life and more legacy. Um, we're trying to make sure that our lives matter. We're not just checking off boxes. And part of that is having meaningful connections. You can't really project yourself in a meaningful way out into the world if you're not connected with others in a meaningful way. And the biggest way that we can do that is surrounding ourselves with, it could just be one meaningful connection, one person who is our ride or die friend, <clears throat> one person who we really feel connected to, or it can be several. Our goal isn't quantity here though, it's quality. Who is it that we're going to be able to surround ourselves with so that we can show our vulnerabilities, so that we can express ourselves openly and fr freely without any kind of worry that we're going to be judged. Uh, you don't get that from a lot of the friends when you're out um, congregating with the um, parents on the soccer field or when you're um, hanging out with your children's friends' parents. Some might be your meaningful connections, but some may not. It's okay. It doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that we have some meaningful connections in our lives. So to do that, we should be acknowledging and looking at our friendships and saying, who is it that I feel that I can call if I'm in trouble? If something happens, who can I call? Who would I feel comfortable enough to call? And who can I call if something amazing happens to me? And I won't feel like that person that I call is going to feel jealous or envious, that they're going to be so happy for me, that they're going to be celebrating with me. And likewise, who is it that calls you when they're in trouble? Do you think about it? Do you say, wow, I didn't realize that I mattered to that person so much? And who shares with you the amazing things that happened to them? Because they're being vulnerable with you and they're expressing their connection and that it's meaningful to them, to you. So if we can acknowledge that, um, it makes it more possible for us to engage in it more deeply and to really put the work into making our connections 
uh, that may have a possibility of being very meaningful to us actually meaningful. Um, so the idea of having it in our minds when we're thinking of our friends and we're thinking of those who are in our network, who we really feel like we already are connected in a meaningful way, uh, we can continue that engagement. Um, but those who we think, you know, there's a possibility there. I really like this person. And I do feel like I could, I could work harder on this. That's what we can do is to put the effort into it. Because in midlife, our time is precious. We are still usually working. Um, we have hobbies. We have passion projects. We're still, you know, at some level with our kids raising them. We may have parents that we're also taking care of. So it's important that we're really putting our time and our energy and our effort into our meaningful connections because they're going to be there for us when we're in need. It's going to be a buffer against loneliness and it's going to help us with our emotional well-being. When you have a connection uh, to someone that's pretty deep, it helps you to feel secure, safe. There's a trust level that's there. All of those things are involved in meaningful connections. And every single one of us um, has the ability to have at least one good, meaningful connection in our lives. So here's what meaningful connections are. And I'm just going to read this. Um, you can find this in the blog that I write for um, uh, for Psychology Today, or you can also find this in the blog that I have um, on Substack as well. So meaningful connections are um, a two-way street. Both parties get something from the relationship. The meaning in this is critical and the ability to share vulnerability, common interests, values, and any other interests are examples of the meaning. So having the common interests that, that you may share, your values, those are important. But this, the real big key here is sharing vulnerability. Um, so that is one big key there. A meaningful connection is a person that you call or meet if you feel anxious or upset. You can text them, you can call them, you can email them. Any of those ways uh, that you want to connect with that person, it doesn't always have to be in person. This can be the person that you call um, while you're driving, that you have a regular contact with, with this individual. This is somebody that you're comfortable showing your vulnerability with, and you expect them to soothe you in a time of need. This is also the person that you call when you have fantastic news you cannot wait to share. And a meaningful connection is someone who calls you when they need someone to vent to. And you are happy to take that call because you care to hear what they have to say. In midlife, this is critical. This is part of generativity. We're caring about that other person. And this is the same person um, who'd be happy for you if you told them something extraordinary happened. Um, and you are interested in their well-being, whether good or bad. This is somebody that you're going to ride through the rough times with, and you're going to ride through the good times with. So here's what meaningful connections are not. And this is also important. A meaningful connection is not your connections with people on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. These are your connections, but they aren't necessarily meaningful. Um, you can follow what they're doing. You can know the latest job that they're holding. You can like their posts and follow them. But because you have all this information about them does not mean that it's meaningful. A meaningful connection is not finding a mentor at work who hopes, you know, who you hope will open doors for you, but who you don't have a mutual relationship. So in this case, um, you know, if you wanted to have a mentor that was a meaningful connection with you, you'd also need to be thinking, how am I offering something to my mentor? You're not just looking to the, for the mentor to give you something. You, there has to, has to be something you're also offering them because this is a two-way street in order for it to be meaningful. It's transactional otherwise. 
A meaningful connection is not a coworker with whom you do not share any mutual feelings or concern, concerns for one another outside of your work obligations. So we all have connections at work. We may have um, other hobbies that where we're really connected with people. We have a great time with them. We have a lot of fun, but it ends there where you're not hanging out outside of uh, the workplace you don't seek to spend time without them outside of that area where you're engaging with them. That's where the meaning leaves. Now that doesn't mean don't have that relationship. It just wouldn't be counted as a meaningful connection. However, in these cases that I mentioned, these are places where you may say, I think that I'd like to develop one of these friendships into a meaningful connection or one of these connections that I have in a location into something more meaningful. We can really sort of look at it and say, I have options here and this is really wonderful. So sometimes a person can feel alone in a sea of people. But once you take a step back and you look and you say, here are opportunities for some more deep relationships with people, that's where it comes in where we can say, I see where meaningful connections um, may not be occurring but there's possibility that I could develop them into one. So we all crave meaningful connections. We're built to have meaningful connections and we can do this at any age. We're never too old to start to have meaningful connections and we're never too young. From nine to 99, we can all be developing meaningful connections and we can start to really take a look at who we're engaged with and say, who do I really want to spend my time with? And if you find that you're spending your time with a lot of people who are fun, but that you don't have anybody that you can really open up to, or that you can um, express yourself with openly and freely without worrying about judgment or um, feeling vulnerable, then um, take a look at who you're hanging out with and see if there's potential for developing those in a deeper way or say to yourself, Hey, I'd like to maybe look in new places for some po possible meaningful connections. And that would be looking at people who share the same values that you, as you, uh, the same interests as, as you. And it does take um, a little bit of work, but being vulnerable is okay when we're being vulnerable with the right people. So uh, give it a shot at being vulnerable with people as well. So meaningful connections really do matter to us, not just at the moment, not just for having a good time with people that we enjoy spending time with, but they really do help our health in the long run, physically and emotionally. So I hope that you're able to assess your connections and that you're able to find uh, some meaningful connections in your life. And so for that's it for today. I look forward to connecting again in the next podcast. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the After 40 podcast with Dr. Deborah Heiser, part of the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network. If you learned something new and this conversation made you think, then add this show to your favorite podcast player, subscribe to the ITSP Magazine YouTube channel, and share the ITSP Magazine podcast network with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to connect your brand to our conversations and our audience, visit itspmagazine.com to learn how to sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey.